in the broadcast. Let's look at this poem. A poem written by Dom Cart Bali, a retired general in the Nigerian army. Bali says to Biafrans, it was a war for secession, a war against persecution and oppression, against genocide and other atrocities, in defense of lives and properties, to ensure their survival and independence, freedom and meaningful existence. Bali says to Nigeria, to keep the country one is a task that must be done. The Civil War. The Nigerian Civil War. Events leading to the Nigerian Civil War are the census crisis of the early 1960s, aggravated the ethnic divide in Nigeria. Another subject that ignited the crisis of the Civil War was the 1964 federal election crisis. As if that was not enough, in 1965, there was the Western Region election crisis that led to Operation Wet Year. By this time, the political system of the country was breaking down. Politicians had become reckless in their ways. By this time, Obafemi Awolowo had been sent to prison. Following the 1965 election crisis in the Western region was the January 15, 1965 coup. Remember the coup? We have been discussing about the coup in this class of politics, history, and power. And we have spoken about a book, Why We Struck, written by Wale Ademoiga. Following the January 1966 coup was the July 1966 counter coup. To some, the January 1966 coup was an Igbo coup because it was led by mostly Igbo officers. To others, the July 1966 coup was a northern coup because it was led by northern officers. Some would argue that the main beneficiary of the coup, Yakubu Gowon, was the leader of the coup. Others would say he benefited from the coup, but the main leader of the coup was Mortala Muhammad, a Fulani army officer. So, by 1967, there was a war between the East against the North, should I say also against the Western region. Who was the leader of the coup? Who was the leader of the East? Odumegu Ojuku, of course. Let me quote Ojuku. Ojuku says, from independence, there has been no Nigerian leader. That what you find are ethnic leaders that succeed to a certain extent in imposing themselves. Using his words, in fact, 
I will tell you that a Nigerian leader really cannot emerge until a Nigerian state emerges. He continues, It is one of the reasons I say we should sit round the table to design the state. Have we sat, have we sat round the table to define the state? On the 16th of August, 1968, Emeka Ojuku makes a point. I quote him. Intelligence reports spoke about the massing of troops by Gowon on Biafra's borders. He declared war. There had been an opportunity to strike first, but I knew that no matter what our temporary advantage, eventually, with Nigerian resources, they would be able to push us back. So it became important for me that the world should know that I was not the aggressor. That was the leader of Biafra speaking on the 16th of August, 1968. Now, the war is history, and those who fought in the war are makers of history. There were those who fought on the side of Biafra, and there are those who fought on the side of Nigeria. And the opportunity to listen to the war veteran is always a beautiful opportunity to learn from history. I am a student of history, and I take advantage of every opportunity to learn from history. So, let's learn from history. Let's look at history in its clearest dimension. Let's learn from the story of the war, from a participant in the war, a man who fought in the war. He saw death, he saw weapons, he used guns. Lieutenant Colonel Emmanuel Ulukayode Ajayi retired. It's good to have you on State Affairs. Thank you, Chief. I'm grateful. Happy to see your face again. I'm happy seeing you too. And uh, you are aging graciously. You know, you still look strong. Is that how old soldiers look? Yes, once a soldier is regarded as a soldier forever. Mm. Do you still do some push-up? I do, because the blood is used to warm me, and if you fail to do that, then you will develop a series of uh, sicknesses or illnesses. So exercise is good for the body? I, yes, I trek. You trek? I trek, yes. I trek at times. I jog at times. So to you keep me fit. You still jog? I jog. Are they at, at your age? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Good to have you on the program. Thank you, Chief Edmund Obilo. You fought in the war. I fought. I fought in the war. You know, you've always told me that you don't want to see another war. I don't want to. No, war is very, very agonizing. Mm. Agonizing. Very, very, very agonizing. Mm. It's just too bad. There's no two ways for it. It's bad. War is not something somebody will ever pray for. If somebody sees war one day, that person will never pray for war again till his end. Do you but, sometimes reflect when you are alone, you know, picture the Biafran yes, war? Yes, yes. I normally think um, uh, if you want to say what, what actually caused that war, Mm. You mentioned some uh, remote and immediate causes of that war. And I st strongly believe that war couldn't have been at all mm. if we were wise enough. 
No, because no side, either Biafra or this or Nigeria, was actually prepared adequately for that war. Biafra was not prepared. Nigeria too, because you know we were thinking of police action. Yes. July 67. No, so we were planning. Nigeria was was making a plan that if they now decided to use few soldiers and um, many police to checkmate whether Ujuku will have seen this thing to discourage him from uh, actually from ceasing. Mm. But he did not... Uh, you feel Ojuku did not see reason? He did not see reason. He it, succeeded. And he was not actually prepared for that war. He wasn't prepared? He was not. When you say he wasn't prepared, what do you mean? Well, if you are preparing for war, what of the people who are supposed to fight the war? Where are they? What of the weapon? Do you have the weapon? weapon yeah. you, don't have. you don't have weapon, and uh, you do not, it's as if you are not prepared. If you are preparing uniform, weapon, and all that, very, very important. But so if you fail to do that, well, we, they, they, they become ragtag. So Biafran soldiers were ragtag. Rag -tag. They had no uniform. No uniform. They had no good guns. And you said Nigeria was not prepared to. Niger yes, Nigeria was not prepared, actually. But Nigeria was more prepared than Biafra. Now, had they been, Ojuku did not mandate the uh, Banjo to bring truth from uh, Enugu to, to Ore. We wouldn't have started the war as early as that. But unfortunately, he brought, he mandated uh, Banjo to cross River Niger and uh, brought the, the troops, his troops, to Benin. And since uh, we, David Ejo, who was a governor of, a uh, military governor of uh, Bende, the, and he the, came straight. The Midwest. Midwest, and came straight to Ore. And uh, like what I heard, that he was uh, even asked to go straight to Lagos to do what? To capture go one is as it, any reason in that. But from what we have learned, that was not the order that was given to Banjo. Not that was Banjo's own personal mission. But he brought them. That 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 was why was when they, when they returned to Biafra, they were executed. You remember is, is the story? I, I know. I remember. In September, because they didn't, according to the stories yes. from analysts, they didn't listen to order. The order was not to go to Okay, Ore. what was the order? I learned that the order was to create a buffer zone with the Midwest. To create a buffer zone. But perhaps Banjo had his own mission. But having said that... Do I, well, I find it very hard to believe that. Okay. Otherwise, if you had been ordered to create what I've just said, it wouldn't have brought them as far as to Ore. Um, I, in fact, I was told he was instructed to go straight to Lagos. But now thinking that he was from, or he is from a uh, Ijebu area, very close to Ore. Now he now asked them to anchor at Ore because Ore poses the, the best uh, 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 junction where he has a series of junctions that are uh, just a, a, a place where if they hang up there, it will be very beneficial to them. And uh, you were among the Nigerian soldiers yes. that were mobilized to dislodge yes. Victor Banjo and his troops. Yes, at all. Uh, How did it August. happen? Uh, well... You see, if you are not, actually, if you are not brought those, those troops, you know, or uh, and the uh, western area, area, that was too deep area of uh, jurisdiction, area of oppression. No, you don't need to be told to mobilize your troops to, to, to move with an enemy as, uh, uh, as um, 
across to 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 your boundary. I mean, to your corridor. Mm. But then the DOC might have been take, taking order, might have been given order by the head of state and the commander in chief of the armed forces to dislodge the Biafran troops that were anchored at Ore. Motala Mohammed was, was the, the GOC. GOC. Yes, was the GOC. At the time. So you operated under the second division. Under the second division. You joined the Nigerian Army. I joined the Nigerian Army in December 66. I told you we were called the one soldier because the uh, one received baton of power in July following the repressor or whatever you can call that coup. If you call it uh, repressor, if you call it retaliatory, if whatever you call it, by special grace of God, he became the head of state and commander-in-chief of the armed forces. That was July 29, 1966. I joined Army December the same year, mm. December 66. I went to NA depot. I was a member of 7 and 8 platoon in Zaria. So we were only two platoons, one from the south, one from the north. So we, we marched together and formed A and B company. Seven platoon I was, A company. And uh, eight platoon, B company. After our training, I passed out April 67, and A company, seven platoon A company was posted to Dodan Barracks, where the head of state was at that time. So we were there doing the training, doing guiding, guiding some uh, important people in, uh, in uh, Ikoyi. The ministers were in Ikoyi. And we were guiding like Milton uh, when we, we were doing tra the training in the morning. Mm. In the evening, we would be posted to all those important areas in Lagos. Lagos was uh, the city of the government at that time, federal capital. So, so we were there until Banjo now came to Ore. So we were now mandated to move from Ore, I mean from Dodan Barracks straight to Okitupa. To Okitupa. We were, yes, we were led by General Iluyo Made, he was a major that time, and other and all that truth. You know, AY, you just uh, flashed his picture as a young army officer. Mm. You know, you looked young and so handsome here. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. aging. <laughs> what do you expect? <laughs> and you can we see that picture again? <laughs> what, do <we> e <laughs> what do you expect? You know? No, that, that war, you know, you know, um, it's not too good for this nation. Mm. We wouldn't have had any cause to fight war if everything had gone beautifully well, gone fine. That, whole, that war is just baseless to me. Baseless war. Baseless. Mm. Now, when you got to Okitipupa, what then happened? Yes, we got to Okitipupa early in the morning. Now, when we moved out of you know, that is why at times army is so diplomatic. Now, I was a guard at Enauro, Enauro's house on that fateful day. Enauro was Minister of Information to Gowan at that time. And you were a guard in the I house. was a guard. I was a private soldier, a guard. And Around the midnight or 1 a.m., there was the sound of a bugle from Northern Bar. You know the same Ikoi. Bigo is a pam, 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 go. Then we decided we, we, we understand that something <laughs> was actually happening. Mm. Then we were, before you know it, there was a vehicle that converged us back to Northern Barracks. We were Northern Barracks. And uh, a lieutenant addressed us. 
that we were going to carry ammunition from 6th Battalion in Kedja, that we should go on time and come back. That was how we left. We got to Ikeja 6th Battalion. We were in uniform. We were, they started giving us steel element. Steel, you know, steel element. Yeah. And more ammunition. We were in uniform already. That was how we left to unknown destination. You we were not told you were going for the war. How will I? I will. I, I, I mean, I mean, doesn't do that. Okay. If you are told that you are going to <laughs> to, 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 to to Boko Haram enclave, what do what do you will try to? <laughs> so we were not told. We were only informed that we were going to carry ammunition from this point and come back straight to Dodan Bar. By the time we got to Ikeja, this battalion, the area was uh, already uh, already uh, secured. Mm. So that if we wanted to run, where will you run? There's no way. Mm. Then they started, when you collected your own element and the, you will be directed. You will be directed to the vehicle. Fifteen vehicles. Then we were heading towards unknown destination until the second, the the, the following morning, we got ourselves at Okitoka in front of General Hospital. That was August sixty-seven. That is how all started. August 67. August. You got to Okidukupa. So by this time, Victor Banjo and his troops they were, were already still, in Ore. They were in Ore. They were to uh, Ore. All over, Boko Danda, you know, you see, they were everywhere around that side. So were you told the enemies were around at that point? Uh, now somebody now we don't we don't need to be told again that uh, we were we, we were all very su highly surprised in that uh, thing that worked that way. See, we, we were even saying, ah, but we were told we were going to, but we met ourselves there. Any any need of uh, dodging back again? No need. We started dividing us to section to platoon and to. That's how the army operates. That is how the army operates. So you should be ready 24 hours. You should be on alert. You can be moved to anywhere at any point. Even though you are not, uh, you are, are you, at times you are not told to be at alert. You are collected and uh, you are you are the mercy of the commander. Commander knows in and out of, he knows what is happening. But you, you are under him, you don't know. So they've already wrecked that area. They've already known where the troops are supposed to to be to, 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 to be to be divided or to be yeah. So when was the first shot fired to take on Banjo and his team? Mm, yes, I wouldn't you see at times when I want to you see this story at times because I wouldn't say I was the first to who started that fire. Mm. Because I told you I was motivated by that my position as a, as a session commander. I was so motivated. How could I have become a section commander? But I became that by the virtue of my 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 number. Among the troops there, I had a senior number, 63 and 9495, four figures. Most of them that joined later, they had five figures. Alamala was opened, was opened when we were about to, to finish our training at a depot NA. So I, I became their senior. So I was appointed section commander. And with that, you know, those who were coming to attack us, we are attacked first. Did you fire the first shot? I fired the first shot. You fired the first shot? 
that started and my the war. Yes, my troops followed. But firing the first shot does not mean you 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 kill because some people say you do this. You do yeah. That. Mm -hmm. So I fired, and uh, at the end of it, I was recognized and I was promoted. Mm. So. So what was the battle in Ore like? Yes, uh, we started from. Okitupa, not even Okitupa, at Foriku. It was a hell of a problem. We got to Foriku at, at around uh, 3 a.m. 3 a.m. Now they started firing at us. They were expecting us. They were at sharp corner, and uh, in fact, we were sharply pinned down. Casualties here and there. Casualties all over, but at the end, of, you know, it was dark. It was at night. So by the time it was done, then we discovered this. Look at casualties all over, and yet they were still firing, firing. Biafra. But you said they didn't have weapons. No, no, I didn't say they didn't have weapons. Did they have they enough, not, mm, enough weapons? Yeah, no. Yes. 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 The, even they, this we are seeing now, just by the grace of a machinery. Machinery. They depended solely on machinery. Mm. So now they started firing, firing. At the end of it, when the day was done already, then one major called Major Peter. But the one that fired the first ammo, ammo car of the war, the Red Devil, called Red Devil, at Foriku, six miles to Ore. A Nigerian soldier. A Nigerian army officer. He was a major. Mm. But that major was killed that very day, too. Major Peter? Major Peter. Was killed that day? He was killed the same day. By the Biafran Bia 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 yes. By in Ore. In Ore. So how were you able to dislodge them? No, we dis now, after the gunning down of that red devil, red, that red devil possessed to be the first ammo car born in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in that in that order in the in the war, the first ammo car that was destroyed during that civil war, was this red devil at Okitupa area. Foruku especially. And Major Peter was the one that destroyed the Anati officer. He was the one that actually gone down the the Red Devil. The Red and Devil they, belonged to the Biafran. That, that in fact the Red Devil was their defense. Because that is that was where uh, uh, all sorts of uh, guns were emanating. Guns, rocket launcher, everything. But by the time the thing was gone to down, all the explosives inside the 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 armor, the, the Red Devil started shooting. So by doing that, we dislodged them. Actually, then they started running. Mm. Started running in the bush. They started, and we started. That major said we should pursue them. We started pursuing them in the bush. They started running. At a time, Major Peter again. In fact, that Major Peter was the only one we recognized. The only one we know the error of the, the error of the, the battle. So, after a time, he called us to order, and he entered up and had another. Uh, War vehicle, but that is that that was that the same vehicle that somebody fired a Biafra fired and killed him there. Oh, <laughs> war, war! He was dead. He was shot dead. But Victor Banjo was not captured. No, no, no. Victor Banjo had retreated, according to what I had, retreated back. 
and he went back to Biafra. Retired back. Are you just joining the broadcast? We are discussing the Nigerian civil war. I have a war veteran in the studio, Lieutenant Colonel Emmanuel Olukayode Ajayi, retired. He fought in the war. So he's recollecting the sins of the war. But the theme of his story is that never again should we go to war. That war is not good. What are the lessons for these generations? What are the lessons to learn from the Nigerian civil war so that we don't repeat ourselves? We have started the narrative from the battle of Ore. And one name has been coming up again and again. That is Victor Banjo. Victor Banjo was one of the soldiers that were arrested after the counter coup, after the coup of 1966. He was in prison in the East when the war broke out. We learned that Ujuku released him from prison, including other coup of the 1966 era. Ifajuna was one of them. Why Victor Banjo was in prison? He wrote letters to his wife. Have you read the letters? The letters Victor Banjo wrote to his wife are like memoirs because he did not have the opportunity to write his own story of the war because he was later executed by the Biafran authorities for what was called sabotage of the Biafran war effort. But there is a book here Entitled A Gift of Seguins, Letters to My Wife. It is a book by Banjo, but Banjo did not intend to write a book. So what Banjo's children did was to compile those letters of Victor Banjo into a book. And in the letters... Victor Banjo told stories of prison, stories of politics, stories of betrayers. So this is the book, A Gift oh. of Seguins, Letters to My Wife. This is a remarkable book that will give the readers a good grasp of events, as well as changing the reader's understanding of history. Because the book is strikingly original. It sheds some light on Nigerians' recent past. It is the story of a brilliant and courageous man weighed down by history, and of a woman's extraordinary stamina to struggle despite all difficulties. Chief, Chief. Okay. Uh, okay. Sorry to interrupt. Yes. But do, do you actually say uh, if Eduna was deflected to the East okay. with Banjo? What do you think? No, no, no. It's not right. All right. After that coup, okay. first coup of January 15, 1966. Yes. Where Sadauna and all this. Now, do you know he was the planner? If I do know. Mm. He was the planner of that coup. He was the one that brought Uduku, I mean, Izegu. Mm. That was the coup, the first coup. 
January 15, 1966. Mm. He was the one that recruited Izegu because Izegu had told the world that he was ready to gun down all the premiers. So after gunning down Sadano, now he mandated BM, Brigade Major, to the Brigade Commander. That Okitupa man. Mm. Brigade Ademulegun, he assigned his major, his Brigade Major, to kill him. And he assigned another person to kill Ife Juna. Ife Juna did not move to Enugu at all. Hey, I'm saying he was in prison. At where? In the east. Who? When Agui Ronsi took over, he arrested some. He arrested all the coupists. No, no, it was uh, Ife Juna there. Yes, he was arrested, Ife Juna. Zogu was arrested. Yes, if, I know yes. Zogu, yes. All of Zogu them, deflected. Yeah, all, all of no, them wait, were, wait. okay. Banjo deflected to the east. Did they really, that, I mean, no, they were in the east. They were already in prison. With a fair Juna? Yes. Okay. They well, were already I'm in not, prison. They were locked okay. up. You know, one of the reasons for the counter coup was that Agui Ronsi was slow in dealing with the coupist. He only arrested them. So most of them were in prison. So no, when no, no, they, they, no, let's get something right. All right. Now, the coup was planned and executed. Yes. Now, the only person I think is stupid is that major. Which of major them? Major Isegu. Nzogu. Isegu were killed in Runsi. But he was in Kaduna. Uh -huh. Rossi was in Lagos. Uh -uh. Who sent somebody to kill uh, uh, Akintola here? So, so that's one of the questions. Those that were sent to arrest in Ronsi uh -huh. did, did not, not arrest, arrest No, 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 no. They did not. No, not that. They, did, they, saw, they saw him. Uh -huh. They got him arrested. He spoke uh, language to them. Okay. And they asked him to dress in his uniform and, and left. Mm. Otherwise, they, now... Isegu will have even asked them to, will have found out properly whether that man was killed or not. Mm. If he had been killed, and again, stupidity is that uh, anyway, age, like, like I said, age actually worried him. If, if he was more matured than that, he would have appointed his own military governors. I don't believe that uh, uh, Ironsi uh, is the first. Uh, Military military president or military head of state in Nigeria. You don't believe? I don't believe. Why? He's the other man. Uh, who? Zogu? Zegu. Zegu Kaduna, yes. But he did not capture the whole country. He, wow. he only captured the north. So at that time, he could not have... What of what west? Who sent somebody? Did he not capture Yeah, west? they captured the Midwest. They kicked Tafawa Balewa. Uh -huh. So uh, people are wondering what really happened. Yes. No, to me, I don't believe Ironsi is... In fact, if I'm asked to speak now, okay, I will say the first military head of state in Nigeria is Izegu. Mm. Izegu Kaduna. If it been for that two weeks, it was, who brought that uh, debt with uh, uh, Umwawo and uh, somebody? No, my debut. Mm. He brought that debt, that uh, presidential debt from Kaduna down to to Lagos with my General Madebo. If he was not uh, the president, he was, if he was not the head of state, would he have done that? So you feel he was stupid? He was stupid. He would have appointed that two weeks. Was enough for him to have appointed his military governors. If he has appointed military governor, Lagos, uh, Lagos and uh, West, now, Oh, this man wouldn't have chanced him. Ironsi. Ironsi wouldn't have chanced him. Ironsi could, in fact, Ironsi crook him that he should come. He was loyal to him, stupidly. He now carried a uh, presidential jet to Lagos. The man got him arrested. You see the story? You see history? No, I wouldn't have, uh, yes. Look at this book. Yes. That's Zogu. Zogu. This is a book written by Obasanjo. You know, as we tell the stories of the war, we also recommend books to you. You can buy these books from our stores. 
udarabooks.com. It's an online bookstore. You can go on the store, read this book, have your own understanding of history. And you can also get this book through the WhatsApp numbers pinned to this broadcast. The WhatsApp numbers are there. We started by Vict with Victor Banjo's letters. And now, Kone Emmanuel Ajayi has given us his own perspective of the person of Unzogu. So you can get these books on udarabooks.com or you get them through the WhatsApp numbers pinned to this broadcast. And in the course of the analysis, another name came up. And that is the name we know officially as the first military president of Nigeria. But Kone Emmanuel Ajayi retired feels that the first military leader of Nigeria was Nzogu, just that he did not act fast enough. So look at this book. It's entitled Ironse. Nigerians are writing history. Read this history. Perspectives to the war. Ironse. Written by Chuksi Lebunam. When this book first appeared as Ironside in 1999, it drew national attention to a critical vista of Nigerian life that had deliberately been obscured with smoke screen. So the author embarks on a journey to reveal some of the true stories of the coup, the war, and Nigeria after the war. So this is the third book we are recommending in this class. Colonel Emmanuel Ajayi. Uh, and I was wondering, are you going to write your own story of the war? Well, I think I'm doing that right now. But do you know what I feel? Mm. If, if now this thing is supposed to be a lesson to all of us, mm. and uh, we are learning. Yes. yes. When we have an educative program of this nature, then we can stick to it. Good. Now, you see that coup, first coup of uh, January 1966. Yes. What I feel about that personally, the, 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 the coup wasn't have been one sided. Mm. If a coup becomes one sided, then any other thing can happen. That's what brought that war. What we are talking about now mm. is, is one of the remote or immediate causes of that war. If you say you are five, but you say two of them are your banjo and uh, Ademu, Ade, Ademu, Yiga. Ademu Yiga, what what impact? What role do they play in that coup? Even Victor Banjo is saying he did not play any role in the hey, coup. Why? Why did he join them? It, why, why were they five then? What, what, Victor Banjo was not part of them. Uh, he was part of them. It was a Adem Legu was part of them. Mm -hmm. They were only, do you know, at that time, they were just used. Used and dumb. Used and, and dumb. I wouldn't have, in fact. As for me, I would never take that. Okay. They make them serve as a, uh, spread uh, uh, something to make sure, I mean, to say that they participated in it. Do they know when they strike? But Ademo Yega knows. He, he wrote his own story. Okay, what, he, what, he, was, he was crucial to the coup. He was. Yes. What, was. Role, what role did he play? You, 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 you have to read his book. No, 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 no. I know much about this. I know I, I'm a student of history too. Good. What role? He's alive now. Let him tell the world. He has what written a role? book. What, what did he do? He was there, and the captain was sent to Ibadan to kill a, uh, uh, Akintola. In the Akintola. What role? Somebody was sent to kill uh, my Malari in, in, in Lagos. Somebody was killed, uh, was sent to kill uh, uh, Ademulegu. Which, which role did he play? So are you making the point that it was an Igbo coup? Igbo coup, yes. These two, these two gentlemen were used for national spread, just to look like they participated in the or something. They were not. Or which, which, it was when they ran to the east, 
that whether they were in prison or re then released and then banjo again became we say twice or so. That's all. But they supposed to have if I, I plan coup, eh, you, you kill my father here and you we had four four premiers there. Mm -hmm. We have Opara, we have uh, Osadebe, we have uh, uh, Sadauna, we have Akintola. Then how will you have killed the two? And you leave uh, this man at uh, Midwest, Midwest and region, Osadebe, and the Opara again. Why? They should have been killed all. All true. Okay. But without killing them, that's what brought us to this... Uh, Unnecessary war we fought for 30 years. So after dislodging, dislodging Banjo from Ore, mm -hmm. what was the next move? To say true, we, we in fact I was I was I had that I I was injured too and uh, I was taken to Kitukwa General Hospital for a week or so. And by the time I came back, I met my troops at all, my brigade, same brigade, at Eho. At Eho. Wow. Very close to Ogbanke. So this time you were approaching Asaba? No, no, not even Asaba. Approaching Agbo, Ogbanke. Do you know Ogbanke? Yes, I know Ogbanke. Approaching Agbo. Yes, approaching Agbo. Yes. That was where we met them. And that war there at uh, uh, this Eho. Mm. They call some people call that place Ogbau. Some people call it Eho. It was a, a, a nasty battle. Tell me about the battle. No, you know the only there is or there was a bridge, southern part of Eho that was broken. I was one of the first people to climb rope. Straight sail to Eho Township. Eho was more of a village than town that time. Very small village like that. But we got there without meeting anybody. Not knowing that they made uh, routes round or round the, the city. So, or the village. There we stopped. For a good three days, it was a nasty battle. You were nasty. Bare front troops in Eho. We I mean, in Eho. Eho. No, but in front of us was the, the nine brigade uh, headquarters. So their friends were stationed in the hall. Yes, they are brigade. They are brigade headquarters. Nine brigade was at the hall in front of uh, uh, in front of Ubanke. Between Ubanke and Eho. Mm. So you know Eho and Ubanke just about five or seven miles away. Yes. Yeah. So it was a nasty battle. We were pinned down. We were, in fact, if not that uh, we had somebody in the person of uh, General Godwin Ali, the brigade commander, not we would have been roasted. All of us would have been killed in that uh, instance. How would you describe Biafran soldiers at the early stage of the war? No, no, no. I now for even keeping Nigeria with all the armament and all, for three years they've tried. They tried. They tried. They tried. Uh, they were very tactical too. Mm. Very tactical. But then <laughs> they, they they were all, always very mindful of uh, the strength and. Uh, the superiority in uh, arms. The superiority in arms. No, Nigeria was well armed. No, we were using British and uh, American distance. The where where they, they solely dependent on uh, uh, Chinese and uh, Chinese weapons. And Chinese weapons were not as good. As good, uh, no, no, not as good as British or American. Distance. So they were dislodging a whole. Like they were dislodged from Ore. So yeah. from a hall, the movement to Asaba, 150 miles or 100 and something. And it was a free movement? No, 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 ah, no, no. It can never be a free movement. They were still on the road? They were, they were. They were on the road. And where it was possible for us to 
we sail on a vehicle, we move. When we are uh, attacked, we have to clear that uh, something before before leaving. How do military clear an area? How do you do that? Well, when 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 you have a pin down, when you are fired, when you you, you, you notice the 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 appearance of enemy, they will fire. How do you notice them? They keep on firing you, firing you. Then what do you do? You will be pinned down and uh, continue to do what you know how to do best. Mm. What you know how to do best. And it can take you days, it can take you one, two, three days, but you have to clear that portion of enemy before how do you Move. clear it? How is it cleared? You fire yeah, back? You, uh, yes, you fire back. With, with better weapon? If you mean, we, they, they, well, whatever they were using at that time, if you mean Ogunigwe. Ogunigwe? Ogunigwe was well, not a weapon. Whatever can kill. Did it's you experience Ogunigwe at all? I know. Why not? Why not? Can you tell me about Ogunigwe? Ogunigwe is, uh, what? Pieces of uh, iron, pieces of bottle, pieces of uh, and uh, to be ignited by petrol, then it's thrown. Wherever it is landed, pieces of iron, pieces of uh, this, closet together. It's a weapon. And it was it, a dangerous weapon. Very, very. When something is a weapon, <laughs> it's dangerous. So when 2nd Division got to Asaba, what then happened? Yes, Asaba. Well, what, what we, we captured Asaba, October five sixty seven. But do you know right from Eho, we were we were forced to pin down at uh, Saint, behind Saint Patrick. No, Saint Patrick is in Asaba. I don't know whether it's very close to Asaba. At that time, it was just like. Uh, a kilometer plus. Mm. But I don't know whether St. Saint, Saint Patrick's is in, inside Asaba now. Mm. But that time... It's also close to Okpanam. Yes, close to that area. Yeah. Zogu is from, was from Okpanam. Yes. Yeah, we had a, an encounter in his, uh, in his town. Okay. Okpanam. But we still say true. We cleared the pocket of enemy and we say true. Then we got to St. Patrick. 4th of October. 1967, fought. So when you got to St. Patrick... We were, we, yes, it rained around 6. We were forced to clean down. So when it rained, what did you do? You you go into hideout? Well, if, if, well, if, if, if there is a, a hiding out uh, uh, portion... You take over buildings in areas you capture? That is where you have buildings. What of if where we do not have building? So what do you, you do? You do that in a in a build up area. What of what do you do when you have no build up area? So what do in you the do? Bush, uh, what do you, you remain there? Will you what, what, rain, what, uh, rain we rain beat you and get dried again and again? Then eh? what do you do? How do you eat? No, no, we eat. Who, who because, brings the food? No, no, it's the same soldiers. We have people at the rear, far, far, far. Okay. They will cook, make the cooking, then brought them down where motor can, they, you know, they are a, a cleared area. Mm -hmm. An area where we consider safe, but no area is very safe in them because flying bullet can still kill them there. Flying bullet can fly over the troops as, at, at, as, as at Feber, front edge of battle area. I hit somebody behind. So nowhere is properly safe, but only God is a human being. So they will cook, bring either two head or whatever it is. You, you cannot fight without eating now. So you have to withdraw those on the front to go and eat. So while they are eating, you move some you, others. No, no, you cover their movement. How do you do that? Uh, you no, know, you don't move, move, move forward. You, if you capture the place, mm -hmm. you pin down. Okay. What if pin possible, down is? 
Yes, you, you possess you, it. You, yes, you make all round defense and wait for further instruction. It may be you will be asked to proceed or give chance. Now, for example, when Agbo was captured, my commander, God Mwali, was telling us that uh, he would have been the one to capture Agbo, if not the nasty experience he had at uh, Eho. If Eho had been a say true, he would have been the one to capture Agbo. Who then captured Agbo? Uh, I'm told it's uh, 8th Brigade. Okay. So, so he came and uh, you know, he said he would have been the one to capture Agbo. So when we got to the to the junction, Agbo Junction, we were asked to move. That is, those who captured Agbo were mandated to pin down and give chance to seven brigade to go ahead. Mm. So if you capture a place and uh, you are instructed to pin down, you pin down. If you are instructed to proceed. Another person, another group will be coming to take over where you've captured. Otherwise, that place could still be recaptured by, by the enemy. So, mm. so that is how it is. The, on, on the war front, mm -hmm. is there a break? Do they say, okay, Colonel, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Ajayi, can you withdraw and have a break and let others proceed? Yes, it, it happens that way. That's the example I've just given. Mm. If a brigade had captured Agbo mm -hmm. and was asked to pin down and give way to seven brigade to proceed, that's all. So when they are pinning down, they are resting? Uh, are they resting? And that, that's what I'm trying to say. So the soldiers, when no, the soldiers no give up off? No, nothing like resting. Everything will be going simultaneously. You don't rest. You don't rest. sleep. How will you sleep? As I'm speaking with you now, I don't know. I don't sleep at night. You don't? I can never sleep at night. Why? It's because of that nasty experience I had at uh, Ununu. You are fond of sleeping. Somebody will just crawl up very close to you. I was another rank. I was a sergeant. Somebody will cross close to you and cut because if he fired, that sound of that uh, firing will have attracted uh, people to know that uh, somebody but they will come. They can cut people's head like seven. That happened? It happened. It happened like that. War is nasty. War is bad. I don't pray for war. War, war, you, 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 like uh, General Chris Ali said, you know, if you, you are positioning people, you are protecting the lives of people, but opening your own life to risk, to danger, you take over here, you cover me here, I'm going there, he will take over. Bullet may not meet him, but you, who is positioning them, you open yourself to risk. You open yourself to danger. Enemy can plug you at anywhere. So that veteran, that's what he said, and it's true. General Chris Ali, that's what he said. You know, today, historians, political analysts, Talk about the Asaba massacre. Well, well, no, you were no, among no. those. I was that captured there. No, it after. happened eight, eight October. Eight of October. Yes, I was among. You know, you see, I wouldn't. I, the other time, I told you, I wouldn't say massacre. Yes, I wouldn't say massacre. What would because you say? if if no, if some regret are not. Um, Employ that uh, tactics will have been flushed out within two weeks of uh, capturing of that uh, area. Why did you say so? We were, we were fired, we were killed, we had no defense, we were on the tarmac. We entered that place around 5th of October 1967. Early in the month, before 1pm, we have already secured us about say, oh, 
my battalion, 71 battalion, was beat to, to take uh, uh, a Ibuza Road. One, uh, ten, 10 battalion again, uh, cable point or uh, Muaji uh, area. Why one, two, three was beat to take uh, Onono side, left hand side of uh, Asaba. So before 1 p.m., we have already secured Asaba. But from that 1 p.m. to night, you see soldiers dying, dying, dying in mass. I mean, it's so tactical now, very tactical. Who, who, who were taking on the Nigerian troop? Who were those firing and taking out? Soldiers? Killing them. Yes. Who Biafra, were Biafra, is it not their ground? Do we know that area better than them? So you come to my house now. If you feel you, this is the door you are seeing. I can now as well take another area. You cannot know my side better than myself. So there were a lot of casualties. Casualties. When you wake up, you see casualties. Both 71 battalion, 10 battalion, 1, 2, 3. So, I mean, I mean, see, the brigade was forced to... to Take that action. What action did the brigade take? Well, it's, well what, what do we call that action? The brigade called out everybody to come to the town square? Um, Men and women and children were invited out of their house to come to the town square? Is it, uh, is it the women or children? No, uh, no, women and children were not. But if you now disclose... As you ask me to come now, eh, as you ask me to come, mm. if you have any notorious planning for me, now will I know? Now, if I, supposing my children are at home now, don't you know we will have come together here? Mm -hmm. We will have been here together. Do, then if it's, uh, maybe you have, and it's linked to them, will the plan not fail? The plan will have failed. Nobody invited children. Nobody invited women. But children and women came? On their own. So when they came to that town square, what did the Nigerian soldiers do? Mm, Nigerian soldiers, that is again the agony of war. Mm. The agony of war. If you say they were killed, of the soldiers, numerous soldiers, they they killed too. Why were they invited to the town square? Yes. Why did the soldiers invite them out? They were invited because Why? of because of the reason best known to the commander. I wasn't the commander that time. Mm. Mm. Because of the reason best known to that commander, even the the the, the commander himself was still in hospital. Godwin Godwin Ali was in hospital. So but it's, it's too icy. Say lost through. So his too icy was Ibrahim Taiwo. Ibrahim Taiwo was the one that actually led us to Asaba. So when they came out, did the Nigerian troop separate women and children from the men? Mm, that's, that's, that's another thing I will not... Supposing... The CEO of uh, 10 Battalion. I was in 71 Battalion, commanded by uh, General, he uh, was a major, Alimi. Okay. Alimi. But another battalion was given that task, was given that task, 10 Battalion, because that was the area of operation. One, two, three again was at Ununo side. Supposing we have uh, uh, the CEO of 10 Battalion, we will have been able to throw more light into this uh, issue we are trashing. So you don't have the detail? I don't have, but I do I know, I don't have the detail, but I know the date and I saw what happened, so but I couldn't have. Many men in Asaba were killed that day. Mm, many men. Yes, they were separated from the women and the children. 
and it was like a firing squad, is it not? Mm -hmm. Why was the Nigerian soldiers afraid of the men of Asaba? That they were afraid of the men. Yes. Why did they? Why were they so concerned about the men? No, that's. Uh, I think that it, it bothers to the same question you asked <laughs> when you came to my house the other time. Mm. That uh, you said uh, uh, troops were sent to Asaba because of uh, Inzegu. Can Can you still recollect yes, that? Yes, I question? remember. Yeah. yeah. So it wasn't like that. Let me tell you, that brigade, some brigade, especially the, the, the authority of that brigade, the, the brigade commander, the his two IC, and all the SEALs, none of them was an Osama. Okay. So to say that uh, it's because is a good kill something, somebody, is a good, is from uh, Opanam, Asaba area, no. But the head, yeah, of, the head of the division was Mortala Mohammed. Mort, yes. He was a Fulani man. Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. Those who are on the ground, mm. they were the ones who saw it all. Who saw, saw it all, they can give instruction. Uh, but I don't think he would have asked somebody to kill innocently like that, to... to to wipe out people like that. No, the brigade was not known for that. I told you the brigade was so sympathetic. The brigade had consideration for everybody in, uh, in Asaba. But you know, in a war situation, but some can be volatile. Honestly, yes. You have those people who are very hot. You have those people who are very soft. Anything can. That's why you don't blame operatives of that war. Blame the war. So how would you judge yourself in the war? Were you among the soft or the volatile ones? Well, I'm, well, I'm, I'm in between. Okay. I'm not, no, no, I, I consider things. Even because somebody wanted to fire me. Somebody actually fired at me because I wanted to defend somebody. Somebody on your own, on the Nigerian side. My 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 sub major fired at me in As, in Asaba. Why? No, he said, no. You see what happened? He asked me, we have already pinned down, we've captured Asaba. Now he has somebody was coming saying one Nigeria, one Nigeria. He was pale. He was uh, not armed, not in, not in uniform. Then the summit, I, I said, sir, fire this man. He was coming to take your, your rifle. I said, I look at it. Kept coming to take my rifle. I said, oh, sir. I, no. We, we now speak outside, but I did not fire him. Then he pointed his rifle at, and he fired. Did the bullet meet you? He did. No, no. I didn't see the part of that bullet. So if the bullet I, had... I, I wanted, to, I cocked my own too. You cocked yours too? I wanted, but... Fortunately or fortunately, my CEO, uh, General Alimi, came down. What happened? Sammy, what do I, I said, my side major asked me to fire this man. But the way I saw him, very defenseless. He asked whether he was carrying him. He said, no, he was not carrying him. If somebody is not carrying him, somebody is not in uniform. He even said, if somebody is carrying him and is able to uh, grant them, put his arm down, and answer up. Well, the never Convention does not permit you killing such a person. Mm. But he has already fired me. Uh, you were uh, lucky. But if, I was lucky, but if I had fired him too, those are the abnormalities of the war. What like, would have uh, happened to you if you had fired? Nothing. Not, uh, what would have happened? Nothing. The same thing happened in the Umunede. Where I come, come one lieutenant. He's a lieutenant general now. Metal lieutenant general. He was a lieutenant. I was a corporal. I got my sergeant the day we captured Asaba, October 5th. We, we, we were at uh, Umunede, ahead of Umunede, just like two posts after Umunede. I saw the officer just running Elta Skater. Ah, but this an officer. Why are you running? Entering, wanted to enter inside motor, wanted to enter. We've been coming right from Eho. 
Why will you be running? I told him, he said, no, this and that, this and that. If I had fired him, I would have killed him. If he had said, why this uh, copra, I'm a, a lieutenant, why would this copra be so rude, he could fire me, I'm gone. That's war. That's, that is war. Abnormalities. So, so as, as Saba was captured, Mm-hmm. And Asaba was tamed. Haven't tamed Asaba. Mm. So, your group needed to cross the river Niger and capture o- Niger. October, mm. yes, October 11, 67. Can you remember? No, 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 yes, I remember vividly. Not, not even. Uh, some brigade, I think some brigade was mandated to capture us a bumping down. Okay. Or otherwise, I don't know. Now, a battalion came all the way from the rear, whether from Kaduna or from Lagos, top battalion of uh, Major Iguinusa. So Major Ibunusa was their CEO, commanding officer. Then I was I was a sergeant. I was mandated to take my platoon. That was that 11th of October, 1967. I was a sergeant. I was mandated, I was ordered to take my platoon to the brigade to protect the or to safeguard the bridge because of that third battalion making the crossing. So by this time had Biafrans fired at that bridge? No, no, they, they no no the bridge no the bridge again collapsed. Uh, they fired at the bridge. They collapsed the bridge. On on yes on the fifth of October. The, the, the day we entered Asaba was the day they they they, they broke they broke the bridge. But it was in the evening, around 6 p.m. Why wait, did they wait. break the bridge? No, they, they maybe they, they thought, they thought they should have even broken the bridge before I did it. But, you know, Biafra, very, very tactical. They thought we would have sailed through, through the bridge to Onicha. Otherwise, they would have broken the bridge at the midway. Mm. Leaving that brigade gone forever with that war. But fortunately, you know our commander, very warlike, and uh, all the other officers, we did not say true. They waited, waited until six. We captured us around uh, uh, one, 12 1 p.m., 5th of October. They waited till 6 p.m. When there was no this thing, now they now broke the bridge. That was fifth of October. So haven't captured Asaba. Yes. And no bridge. No bridge. So you needed to cross the river. What happened? No, no. The third battalion came from Kaduna or from the rear. Yeah. And was mandated to cross to Onisha and capture Onisha. The CEO was in Binusa. I was sent to to protect them, await them at the bridge head. So that was October 11, 67. But so the man came to around uh, 6 37, and uh, the man crossed. He crossed. In Binusa and his battalion. He crossed. Batal- he crossed. It- but. Unfortunately, he left his flank very porous, and they now, Biafra, as we see now, use that that side. Okay, and open it, fire on them. Yes. Why no, did no, he did, did not even fire on them. Okay. He didn't fire on them. You know, Biafra, they were very tactical. He did not fire. He allowed them to say true. Okay. You move inside the town they've never been to before. Most of them are outside from Kaduna. They moved down to, you know, Onisha is very large. Mm. 
they moved into that town. And maybe the CEO lost the grip of the troops. Mm. If you are the commander, keep you have to keep your troops within the area of your command. Otherwise, they will desert you. They will run away and leave you alone. That happened during the war? It happens. You had it deserters? Happens. Uh, we have. It happens. They will abandon the war. Uh, they will run. They will run. Nobody. You think anybody wants to die? Nobody has ever wanted to die. So you have to keep them. But we had one slogan. We prefer enemy to kill us than your, your commander killing you. You kill some to save a lot. It's like you in a vehicle carrying about 18 passengers. You see one on one titty. If you crash landed, all of you, so the best thing is to kill that person to save the image of that vehicle. So they got into Onicha. They got into Onicha. What then happened to them? Yes, they ran into that market, they were running, I think he lost the grip of that. If they were kept together, if he was able to keep them together, he would have captured the Onicha with his. Well, when you enter and you stand your ground to flush you out, it's going to be a problem. Because as you are there struggling with them, other troops are coming in. Leap, leap, legging. One leg got one leg. So, but he did not do that. You were flushed out. You were flushed out. In large numbers. Did Igbinosa survive it? How would they? Where is Igbinosa now? He couldn't have survived. Because what Asusi did was, uh, he did not mind those people who left, who were, but he was so mindful of those people who were coming to reinforce them. Oh, those coming on, in the, on the river? On, from Asaba side. So they now started firing at them? They started firing at them uh, from 8 to 4 a.m. Ah, so they perished in the river Niger? They perished. And those people ran aimlessly at Onicha. When they fired all their whatever they had, what happened? They were trying to come to the shuttle to take uh, ammo. That they capturing them. And that was one of the greatest losses of the Nigerian no, army during the war. No, no, no. Very unfortunate. It was unfortunate. Honestly. So how did... How was Onisha eventually captured? Yes, Onisha was captured by, I don't know the brigade. But you know some also came in from Enugu? Yes, no, no, not through the river this time, because we tried. Even with that, after that first crossing, mm. when the, the GOC now, uh, uh, now noted that it was not possible for them to cross through the river, we were mandated to cross through Ida. We were, went to Ida, the same thing. It was not possible. We got to Elusin again, no Elusin to... It was not possible. Mm. So we tried all within us, no. Then another brigade captured on the side. It must have been the brigade that came in from Osuka area. Uh -huh, from that area, yes. So when they captured on each other, your troop was able to move in at some point. 65 battalion. You moved into Onicha at some point? Yes, I moved. I, I was posted to Onicha in 1969. I was there till, till when Ojuku decided to leave. What was Onicha like then? No, Onicha became... Uh, Onicha was settled before I got to that place, actually. Mm. But, however, we were still wedging through uh, Newi, East Central State. That was just the only area left with the Biafra at that time. Newi. Newi, Ozobolo, Atani, Orifite, and uh, Oka also. That's all. You can even count the, the town, not up to 50. The so, program is State Affairs. Oh. And I'm discussing with Lieutenant Colonel 
Emmanuel Olukayo de Ajayi. He's re relieving no, his. No, no, when you see what I, what gladdens my mind most is mm. that uh, honor. Left one corner, E. Olua Jai, FSS, MSS, retired. When, you, when that is added, mm. that's the salt of it all. FSS, MSS. MSS. Yes. Forces yeah. Service Star. That is FSS. Yes. It is an Me honor. It's an honor. Is it a medal? It's a, well, it's a medal. It is given to you in the military. In the military. So you were given that award. Why? <laughs> I, I, I had like seven medals. Seven. And you were also given MSS. MSS. And you appreciate it. No, that is the greatest honor. I, I don't even need any money. <laughs> that's, that, that's the honor I cherish most, mostly. You can join this dialogue. You can call in. You can call the numbers. The numbers pinned to this broadcast. You can call in to share your own view of the story we are telling. It is Olukayode Ajayi's story of the war. We are recording history. You know, I asked him, is he going to write a book about the war? But from telling this story, he's writing a book. This is an audio yes, book. Yes, I, I, I also think so. I believe so also. You know, it's an audio book. And I've told you, I'm going to transcribe the interview. And beautiful. I'll publish it someday. Beautiful, beautiful. You know, it's your story. It's mine. It's the story mine. of the war. It's mine. You know, and we have recommended books. There is another book of the war. Okay, we have a caller here. Let's pick this call. Ah. Hello. Hi. Good afternoon. Yes, my good. honorable class teacher. Thank you. Bilo. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Anyway, I want to believe you can hear me because I can't hear you. Good afternoon. Our guest lecturer for today's class. Colonel Ajayi, FSS, MSS. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Thank you so much. My name is Femi Mano. Yes. I am honored to be <coughs> the first caller on State Affairs to you. Mm -hmm. I'm calling for the second time since I called the first time. Mm -hmm. I've been so blessed to be part of this class. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been sitting with one side of my, of my buttons. Since the class started, I can't believe what I'm hearing. I'm so glad that Baba is still alive to say this story by himself. Baba, God will bless you and keep you for us. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Thank you for enlightening us today. You know, Nigeria has a very rich and beautiful and beautiful history. Yes. Thank you also, Alice. You were able to give us your, your own side. Mm. Perhaps one very striking one is the part that you said mm. that um, when, you were trying, when you were telling us that the first head of state mm. is Uzovu. I've never had that one before mm. in my life. <laughs> mm. And I'm a constant student of this class mm. and a student of history. Perhaps I can glad mm. myself to be part of that. Thank you. God bless you. Any questions? Mm. I say, but I just want to appreciate God for Baba's life. Thank you so much, and thank you, our teacher Edmond Obilo. Thank you for bringing Baba to this class. I say, may God continue to bless and keep you. I'm honored. Once again, my name is Femi Emmanuel, French scholar on State Affairs Studio. Thank you. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, Femi. Femi Emmanuel, thank you for that call. The lines are open. You can call in. You know, talk to Baba. It's, Baba says no more war. The war is bad. So the lines are open. The numbers are pinned to the post. Pick any of the numbers. You can call on WhatsApp. 
If you are outside the country, if you are in Nigeria, you can call and we are ready to hear from you. So make your call. And through those numbers, you can also buy the books we are recommending to you in the program. I started by recommending a gift of Seguin's Letters to My Wife. That's this book by Victor Banjo. I have recommended Nzogu by Obasanjo. And I have talked about Ironsi by Chuksi Luebunam. Another book I'm recommending to you is this one. This is the story of the war, an account of the Nigerian Civil War, 1967 to 1970. A book written by Olushegu Obasanjo. Classic, classic. This is Obasanjo's story of the war. Don't forget that Obas Biafra surrendered, uh, surrendered to Obasanjo. So Basanjo took Brafra's surrender. In January, that was January 13, 1970. Yes, 1970. You know, some are angry that the person that ought to have taken that flag of surrender was at Benjamin, at Dekunle. Yes, at Dekunle had been retired before that time. But they said it was, they were not fair to him. Mm. He fought the battle, and Obasanjo took the glory. You think so? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's like that. It's like that. That's the military. Mm, well, I wouldn't. Uh, well, maybe I'm too junior to talk about it. Otherwise, uh, Adekunle should have taken the glory, mm. either retired or 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 not. Will have. This now, this book as it is now, is stating where is it from from where to where. If I say I fought the Civil War, I started in August 67 to 70 when the war ended. Where did this man started? Where did he end? Ended in something. You see, Baba is raising an issue. Now, this Obasanjo's book, My Command, is essentially... They, this man, this man now, fought up to uh, just, just four months to, to the end of the war. This man came in. It's not fair to that man. Mm. The man fought right from that 67 to 69, almost, almost at the end of the war. Something happened to that man, and uh, then if this man had written his his own experience of three or four months, it would have been better. But he wrote the story of the no, war. No, no, he should. Uh, well, he, he's also we, a student of history. I can write the write the story of the war from as a researcher. You can write the story of anybody can write. Yeah. But I believe you are a soldier. You can now. I can write the story of if. I'm asked to write the story of where I actually participated. Mm. Okay, where did this where did he say he started this thing now? Starting with a study of Nigeria's political landscape in the years following independence. So he told the story of Nigeria at independence and even took us back to before independence. So this book by Obasanjo chronicles the life of a nation whose hope for the future gives way to the tension, distrust, and suspicion that results in violence and the subsequent outbreak of the war. So, you know, I started the war by telling us some of the political events that led to the war. Obasanjo also analyzed those events in this book. So the book My Command... Gives well, it, it shouldn't have been my command then. It should, they, 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 they tie to... No, 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 no. Let's be frank. Yes. My command means the area I commanded or the... No, the, the, the area I led. Yes. But he led the area. 
He led the yes, he led the third marine command. For how long? Commando. He led it. For how long? You feel he didn't lead it enough? The time wasn't good enough for him to write a story? Benjamin Adokule will have written this thing. But if, if, if even it's written like that, he should have not mentioned my command. My, but he had a command. Yes, he will have, if, if it is my command, he will have said specifically where he started, where he ended. He says this book is essentially the account of my command of the third marine commando division and the story of the end of the civil war and that is a crucial part of the story you want to read this book read it and critique the work of obasan joe here yes and obasan joe is a very good writer why not he's very fluid you know whenever i pick his books i just continue to read so read his own account of the war. Lieutenant Colonel Emmanuel Olukayo de Ajayi is telling us his own story of the war. And watch out as I document his story. This is the second time I'm interviewing him. The first time I went to his house, and this time he's coming to the studio so that you would join the story. Another important book we should be looking at here is this book and uh baba i'm going to ask you some questions mm. you know this is one of the biggest books on the nigerian civil war tragedy of victory by alabi isama you know alabi isama fought on the i know him i know, you know him. that's the man who commissioned me in september 1975 how? When you say commissioned you, what does that mean? No, the war had just ended. I was a field commission officer and I was recommended for commissioning to proper field this field. Good. And no field again, then we have to be properly commissioned as a commission officer, not as a field. Because mm. no field again. Yeah. So far, field has been ended. No, he commissioned me. He commissioned you. What kind of soldier was he? A brilliant, very intelligent, and highly professional. Yes. Have you read his book? No, I've not. But I know him. You know him. I know him personally. You know, you know what he did with this book. Mm. From all the books of the Civil War, there is no book that has the number of pictures like the like ones this here. This man, yes. He you know, he gave all the all the tactics of the war. The diagrams of the war, how they captured different territories. Yes. You know, you find the diagrams here, pictures of the war. You know, he got a, look, you can see his pictures of the war. Yes. You know, you could see, and I was asking him when I interviewed him, how were you able to get these pictures? You know, the story of how these pictures came about is a book on its own. It's a book. And it, that, that taught me a lesson, that if you have the opportunity to document all your activities photographically don't fail to do that. So that the pictures but, make the but, book. But you see, I'm in army. When you if you are fighting a war like mm. that, no, it's good to say what you are just saying. Now. Mm. But practically, is it possible? Hey, but the army should have a photo photographer in the war front, following them. Yes, uh, it yeah. happens now. Then what of in modern he, warfare? He will just he will just be killed. He will he will be a he will also be a soldier. He will be trained. He will be tra even now as a journalist. You are going to the war front. You are given some military training. You know, so they, they, yes, you know where to know. where okay, to take okay, cover. Okay, yes. Now we are progressing. I I like that too. Yes, you are given some military trainings. You know how you know when to move and when uh, not we, to move. We have we have we have all those uh, engineers. All those. Uh, even okay. the army has the communication Com department. Yes, yes. You know? So this book, get this book and read. It's yes. a rich very, story. Very, very voluminous. It's big. Mm. The Tragedy of Victory. On the spot account of the Nigeria Biafra War mm. in the Atlantic Theater. Mm. It was so specific. 
Very, very. You know, third marine commando. Yes, very special. You know, if you want to know about Brigadier Adekunle, read this book. Mm. It was known as the Black Scorpion. The Scorpion himself. Ah, uh, the tragedy of victory on the spot. But, but, but let me ask you, okay. why why civilians do like military stories, especially war stories of this nature? Why? Ah, uh, you asking me. I'm asking you <laughs> because that there was a time I was given two weeks uh, uh, pass. I got to a place in Quara. Mm. In fact, I ran away from that because people were interviewing me late. In fact, all through left, right, center. Yes, when you are at the war, who do you fire? Do you kill somebody? Has somebody killed you? As what? How do you eat? How do you when it rains? How? I ran away. My brother was a teacher in that place. I went to greet him. Mm. Yeah, they just so, want to know. Yes, yes, you know, like, you see, like you are telling the story now. There are persons listening. They are trying to capture, because the Nigerian Civil War, is the, it, that war was the darkest part of our history. So, there are many times I said once, my father fought in the war. Yeah, okay, okay. I've, I've recorded my father's story. In fact, I'm transcribing it now. Okay. My father fought on the side of Biafra. You know? And he'll be asking me, why do you want me to tell you? I said, tell me everything true, that happened. very hard. Uh, what, what? Yes. Very hard to say. Mm. We were to no, no. And, uh, you know, you see, in fact, there was a time we ran out of ammo. At Onunu? We count, uh, at Onunu, we count, in fact, we ran out of ammo completely. When you are having your rifle without ammunition, that rifle becomes an ordinary stick. We ran out of. So how did you survive? I look this? at the people. Who have, I I now commanded them get up, get up. Let's let's catch them by hand. We got up and they ran away. They did not know that we were short of arms, am, ammo. Mm. They ran away. So if somebody has fought war and you come back alive, it's, it's by mercy of God. Because it's not easy. Ah. Brigadier General Godwin Alabi Sama wrote a book, The Tragedy of Victory. Hmm. Get a copy by going on udarabooks.com. Udara Books. Mm. Dot com. You can buy it on WhatsApp through the numbers pinned to this broadcast. The tragedy of victory on the sport account of the Nigeria Biafra War in the Atlantic Theater. That, that man has written about uh, Benjamin Adekule. Yeah. He has written about himself. Yeah. Because he started and ended something. Mm. Yes, that is it. it is but if, if, if you are just there briefly, what I would have loved. By the way, but you explain that he joined other political Event. events. Okay, yes. we got that way too. So this book is a detailed chronological narrative of the war that lasted from July 6, 1967 to January 15th, 1970, with about 500 photographs mm. and maps, the book dwarfs all other previous publications on the subject of the war. In terms of depth of facts, mm. coverage, and accuracy, mm. the well organized, well-disciplined, and efficient third marine commandos, the soldiers in this theater of the war, earlier commanded by Colonel Benjamin Adekunle with Lieutenant Colonel Godwin Alabi Sama, the chief of staff, already controlled the Atlantic coast from Boni to Calabar, before Colonel Olusegun Obasanjo's arrival at the new command. Let me tell you one thing about this book. In this book, 
Alabi Sama took Obasanjo to the cleaners. He attacked this book. In this book, which one? Are in this book, about? yes, Alabi Sama attacked Obasanjo. This book. Oh. He said Obasanjo. This the point you are trying to make. He said Obasanjo does not have the experience of the war. That most of the stories he told here were borrowed stories. But, okay, that's so, what. So he had, he dedicated some chapters to attacking this book. That's it. Is that this what book. I, is that not what I said? Yeah, that's the, the argument you've been making. Ah. You know? So read this book and read this book as a student of this class. Reading opens the mind. Read mm. these books, these two books, and you would see the war mm. from a different dimension. Mm. The tragedy of victory on the sport account of the Nigeria Biafra War in the Atlantic Theater. Great book. I just read the description of the book to you. Now, we will talk about the end of the war. Ojuku yeah. had to leave. He had to leave. Yeah. He believe. had to leave. And he left. You were in only child at the time. I was. How did you? What, what was the feeling in Nigerians' camp? When the story filtered in that Ujuku had left yes. for Ivory Coast. Immediately that happened. Immediately we had, then we had no nothing to do than to move ahead, cross that uh, gully between Onicha and the uh, East Central State, and we moved. We moved and entered East Central State. But I told you earlier, that when others surrendered, hearing that uh, Ojuku had fled, mm. no, they surrendered. But the troops in, for, in front of my platoon did not. Some of them were even crying that, no, 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 we did not agree. We, they started firing. And if I had not been so careful, I would have just killed all of them. Why were you careful? I, I marched towards them, disarmed them, and uh, there I saw Osadebe, the, the musician. Osita Osadebe? Osita Osadebe. He saw? told me, you know, my troops were telling me, let's kill them. No, 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 don't kill. No more killing. The man who created that one had fled. So what do you do? He said, sir, he was a musician before the war. And even about the war, he sung the, and people did not hear. Okay, what do I do for you now? He said he kept his instrument, musical instrument, at Fege, Onicha. I now assigned one soldier to, to follow them. The soldier came back and said, that building where he kept his instrument had been raised to, to blaze, to a blaze. And he now handed over Osadebe to refugee camp in Onicha. So your troop... So Osita Osadebe. Why not? What was he like during that time? He was a corporal. He fought on the side he of fought, the Yes, he was in charge of that zone. Uh, at any zone. He fought the war. He fought he was a corporal. He was a corporal. But he told me he was a musician before the Civil War. That he kept his instrument at Fege in Onicha. I assigned a soldier to follow him. The soldier came back and reported that uh, the, the, the building has been raised to, to a place. So Why did Ujuku leave? Yes, he had to leave. Why? Ah. Then if, if, if 90, 97% of his enclave had been captured, why? He had to leave. And he left again because, to my mind, I don't know any other... Uh, a school of thought. That man did not want his area, especially in Newe, to be bombarded or to, to 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 be ransacked, so to say. So at this time, in Newe had not been captured. In Newe, no, Newe had not been captured. Newe, Osobolo, uh, Orifite, uh, Oli Hiala. I was at Ozobolo, only here, overseeing Ozobolo, very close to Oli here, overseeing where Ojuku took off. 
I was the one assigned to that uh, something from 65 Battalion. What, how did the Nigerian troops see Ojuku at the time? Well, how, how, how do we consider Ojuku? We consider him as our enemy. But then, if he's our enemy, true, truly, I consider him to have even tried his best. They've tried. I uh, wouldn't say they were more, they were even as statical as we are, mm. as we were. Because that man, as you see, I tried, as you see, no, not this one, no. Mm. The warlord himself, that man from Asaba, had actually tried. Mm. So. As we round off this discourse, I mm. want um, you to comment on some of this point. Mm. In February 1994, mm. Emeka Ojuku, the leader, of the short-lived Republic of Biafra, mm. gave his first post-Biafra war speech at the Lagos Law School. He used the occasion to give insights into how Biafra technologically survived for three years under the harshest conditions. Ah. And I want to quote him. He says, the war has come and gone. Mm -hmm. But we remember with pride and hope the three heady years of freedom. Mm. These were the three years when we had the opportunity to demonstrate what Nigeria would have been in, even before 1970. He continues, in the three years of war, necessity gave birth to invention. During those three years, we built bombs, we built rockets, we designed and built our own delivery systems. Ah, okay. That's we right. guided our rockets, we guided them far, and we guided them accurate. Is that true? Ah, it's true, it's true, it's true. It's true. They built their weapon. They built, yeah. You see, that is one of those things. If, as we are now, we are kept here, and uh, we are locked up after a lot of suffering. Do you know we will discover the way to leave this place? We will discover, if even everywhere is set up, we will discover another way of leaving this very place. Mm. So uh, when they were caged, when they were blocked, when they were prevented uh, from having, that's what he's saying now, they build their own armament. They build their own rocket launcher. They build their own, I tell you, at times, no fuel, nothing. They fry the oil. That oil, you know they have oil. Mm -hmm. They fry that oil, become light enough to move vehicles. So, but the mistake, which, uh, not, not, not a mistake, but it may be after the Civil War. Those people, um, making local rockets, making Ogunibe, making all this, they're supposed to have gathered them in a place like Ikorodu, mm -hmm. give them whatever they wanted to have. By now, we will have been making vehicles. So you blame Nigeria for that? I blame Nigeria for that. Oh. We shouldn't have allowed them to waste away like that. Ojuku said for three years, yes. blockaded, Yes. Without hope of import, yes, we maintained engines, yes, that's machines, and technical equipment. That's what I'm just telling you. The state extracted and refined petrol. Uh -huh. Individuals refined petrol in their back garden. <laughs> we built and maintained airports. We maintained them under heavy bombardment. That's only here for you. Mm. You know, I was there. I was at Oli The airport. The airport. What did you see? Oh, well, somebody told me, well, is it uh, not a modern, but anyway, local, local something. Yes. Planes could land and take off. Could, yes. Could land and take off. That was the Biafran That's ingenuity. Oli Yala, yes. Yes, they tried. That's what I'm telling you. They actually tried. If for the one thing that they were able to hold Nigeria 
for good three years. They've, they've actually tried, honestly. But by and large, they did not prepare for that war. If they had actually prepared for that war, the difference would have been in another thing entirely. You think so? I think so. If they were prepared, yes. perhaps they were in a rush. They were in a rush. But remember, at that time, Igbos have been killed, murdered in the north. But but they were recalled back. But you could to tell the, them to go back at to, some point, the, the, and they were massacred again. So at this time, even from the story that mm -hmm. I've read, mm. Ojuku did not want to declare the war. He was mandated by Igbos to declare the war. I've read different stories. At the point, they were threatening to kill him if he did not declare the state of Biafra. Mm. But he would have explained to them that this is what, this is what, very necessary. If you, I, he's a fine soldier now, and... Uh, well-educated and enlightened uh, gentleman. You see, it's not if you are pushed mm, and you allow yourself to be pushed, it's a different thing. It's, you'll be blamed that. Uh, see, I watched a film yesterday. I watched a film. Yes. The, that, the same Biafra Civil War. What I saw there, in fact, it's, it's, it's not good enough. You want to read about Ujuku? This is the book. Emeka Ujuku. Emeka. That is the book, Emeka. Written by Frederick Forsyth. Can we, Ayo, can we play Ujuku during the war when he was talking about genocide? You know? If you read this book by Frederick Forsyth, you would know Ojuku, a small but well-written book. Emeka is the dramatic, powerful, and moving life story of Chuku Emeka Odumegu Ojuku. Mm. It is the story of a rebel, general, head of state, governor, philosopher, and Igbo leader. A story never told before about a maker's youth, his army training, the civil war, his exile of more than 12 years, and his return home on the 18th of June, 1982. Mm -hmm. The writing of this book was authorized by Ojuku and written by his close friend and confidant, Frederick Forsyth. The author of Dogs of War is mm. also the author of the Biafran story. Yes, that book, this you can find on udarabooks.com. Mm. But one of the best works on the Biafran story, written by Foria, is this book, The Making of an African Legend, the Biafran story. Sadly, we no longer have copies of this book. In fact, mm. this is the only copy we have. Mm. It's our archival copy. If you can find this anywhere, you need to read this book. Mm. Frederick Forsyth, The Making of an African Legend, The Biafran Story, is also the author of this book. Because he was a journalist that was sent to Nigeria. He's a white guy. So he covered the war. He saw the war. And he has told his own story of the war. Mm. Let's listen to Juku here, and uh, we'll round up the program. The Biafra did not start the war. We fight in self-defense. What we wanted before the declaration of Gawan genocidal war and what we want now is peace so that we can proceed with the more urgent and more fruitful task of economic, social and cultural development of our country. But do we have this peace? No. Because of Gawan's blatant rape at the United Nations Convention of Genocide, but one conspired with his fellow Nigerians, Northern Nigerians, to massacre over 2,000 Eastern Nigerians in May 1966. This is genocide. Bawan murdered his supreme commander, 
assume his mantle of office and proceeded to direct the extermination of army officers and men of Eastern Nigerian origin. This is genocide. The one plotted and executed the wholesale massacre throughout Nigeria of persons of Eastern Nigeria origin in September 1966, killing over 30,000 defenseless men, women, and children. This is genocide. The one genocidal act perpetrated the mass exodus of millions of Eastern Nigerians resident in different parts of Nigeria, abandoning all their properties, businesses, and their means of livelihood. This is genocide. The one refused to compensate Eastern Nigerians who had lost all their properties as a result of his activities. This is genocide. The one permitted the wanton destruction of properties, looting, rape, throughout those areas of the Africa overrun by his troops. This is genocide. The one ordered the forcible transfer of Biafran children from their homes in Biafra to Nigeria. This is genocide. For all these acts, the one stands condemned for genocide, a crime condemned by the civilized world under international law, a crime against humanity, a crime against God. Over the years, our... State Affairs with Edmondo Bilo is live. Lieutenant Colonel Emmanuel Ajayi retired. That's Ujuku during the war. What do you think about that? Ujuku. Mm. Yes, he has tried his best. No, I, I have not condemned him. Mm. He has done uh, so far. His people as him gave him that mandate to strike or to 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 defend his own territory by all means. Mm. He had tried. He had done his best. But um, war is not the ultimate. Uh, we could have even solved this problem through dialogue. After far, after that war, what happened? We came back to the drawing table. Mm. We should have done what we should have done first is what we now did last. Mm. But the, when when war becomes eminent like that, maybe there's there's nothing anybody can do. Mm. So the last book I'm recommending today is this one entitled General of the People's Army. It's about Ujuku, General of the People's Army. It's a collection of articles written by different persons, military officers, retired military officers, on the person of Ujuku. General of the People's Army. Army the People's Army, the Biafran Army. You know, it's about Ujuku here. Even Jonathan wrote one here. You know, So read this work. You can get it on udarabooks.com or through the WhatsApp number spinned to the broadcast. Get the books and form your opinion of the war. Mm. General Ujuku there. Mm. Lieutenant Colonel Emmanuel Ajayi. Yeah, thank at, you, Chief. At your age now, how do you relax? No, I relax. I... No, I, I'm not, in fact, I'm okay. I'm not bothered by anything. I have good children. Mm. I train my children. My first son is a lawyer. I mean, he's a judge now. He's a judge now. In Asaba, yes. You, and you know, during the, during the war, you took a wife from Asaba. I took a wife. So so the war gave you a wife. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what do I, what do I when, you, when Nigerian troops captured Asaba, you also captured a no, woman. No, no, even my, my <laughs> she was... <laughs> <laughs> one of my general too. He has a wife there too. Okay. One of uh, Baba Babangida. You see, no, that is uh, that is the thing. Babangida too had a wife from uh, mm. Asaba. He has a wife from Asaba. The general Chris Ali has a wife. There. So, no, is that any when that place is well settled, you can. Why? We so the mother of your first son is an Asaba woman. Is an Asaba woman. 
Wow. Yes, as we round off, let's see Aditoba Oluwashi. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining the broadcast. Why Kid Gabriel says good afternoon to radio man. Here I can see Jacinta Ugogo Itubo Udubanjo watching. Olabamiji Olaya, thank you for joining the broadcast. Shugo Asumbo is watching. Abe Adiola. Nwa Nwa Boso Chijo is watching. Jacob Ukachuku, thank you for joining the broadcast. Thank you. Hey, Yami Prodigy. Yeah, me prodigy is watching from the UK. Let yeah, me have fun now. You know, the last time we interviewed Baba Yemi yeah, was the director of the production. Okay. Yes, you remember him? I remember. Uh, him. The head of I the production yeah. team. I remember. Yes, he's in the UK now. Mm. Yes, he's also plying his trade as expanding his business of video production. Ah, I wish him success. Yes, he's also watching you and he says hello to you. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, we have Okuru Izundu, mm. Don Chooks. Mm. So those that that fought and those that fought loot and benefited from the Nigerian side decided to cover the truth. Okay? Mm. You know, the truth has different dimensions. Mm. Omotayo Oluwaro Timi Onoba Miro, thank you for always being there. Ifanyi, a queen C. Now, I've been getting a lot of requests. Where are those telling the Igbo stories too? That most of my guests are Yoruba. I hope you understand why. Mm. It's about location. You know, the studio is located in Ibadan. And most of the Igbo veterans, are not residing here. But from next year, we are planning of also moving the camera yeah, to go meet them. Yes. Yeah, but it's quite expensive. Very, very. It's expensive it to be. move a crew to go and record an interview. But we are getting yeah. there. We will soon begin to raise the fund. And that's why we are also saying patronize the store by getting some of the books. Okay. Those profits, the little profits we make, we can put it together and expand the class. That is why we are also saying, get these books. That's one way of contributing to the program. Yes, you are enjoying the show. Get some books. Read. And you are indirectly contributing to the production. Okay. And uh, we'll take the story. I want to go. I've spoken to Chuk Sile Bunam. Mm. Chuk Sile Bunam now lives in his village, somewhere in Anambra State. Mm. And he has invited us to come. And if I need to go there, I'm going with at least five persons. Uh, you know, that's a team. That's that's the minimum. You know, and that is quite expensive. We want to fly. I we might like want it. to drive too. We'll get, we'll get to that point. Mm -hmm. Because I want to interview Chu Sulebunam on this book. The yeah. book is quite revealing. Mm -hmm. uh, this is coming from Alaba Olani. Thank you. Oladu Kunfemi Manuel says he's watching. Yes, Femi Manuel called. Thank you, Femi, for that contribution. I've seen some missed calls. I didn't know when the phones were ringing. You know, they are on silent. But never mind. There will always be more opportunities to join the broadcast. And uh, Kunle Adekwaju, Kunle, thank you for always being there. Mm. You Kunle fixed the lights here. Mm. He's a light man. He's also a video director. Mm. Kunle, thank you for finding time to join the broadcast. And Sunday Shagun Komo, thank you for joining the broadcast. So we'll be putting this on YouTube after this production. Mm -hmm. Subscribe to our YouTube account. We'll be putting it on YouTube mm -hmm. after this production. And we are going to distribute this interview for one month. So we'll begin to cut. Okay. So follow us on Instagram. Follow us on LinkedIn. Just search for Edmondo Bilo on X or Twitter. Search for Edmondo Bilo. We've just had the studio conversation, but it's not enough. I'm going to expand it. And this will also come out as a book later. On Wednesday, I'll be bringing Major Salau. 
Major Salau fought under the third Marine Commando, that third division. He was the armored man, the man driving the armored car. Baba is also growing old. I want them to tell me their stories. I want to document their stories. So he will be here hopefully on Wednesday to tell his own story of the war. And that will be another two hour or two hour 30 minutes package. So don't miss that edition. There's another story we are working on. How Laduja was impeached as the governor of Oyo State. Soon we'll begin to tell that story. We are bringing in about five persons to give the narrative of that story. And that will come out as a book too. So this studio is not just about the talking and the viewing. Most of the stories coming out from here will form parts of books in the future. So there are books from next year will be a publishing company, not just a bookseller, but will publish books for your reading pleasure. Yes. Uh, before we go, the last time I saw you, I addressed you as Major yes, Emmanuel Ajayi, okay. retired. Now I'm addressing you as a lieutenant colonel. What, what, yeah. what changed? What? What changed? What then? What changed? You were major the last two, yes, three years I saw you. Yes, now it is Lieutenant yes. Colonel. What happened? No, I was promoted. After retirement? After retirement. That is, um, it's allowed in the army and it's called, uh, uh, that's a language that is called in the army. Mm. Mm, it's allowed. Okay. Mm. So now they give you. Because your... that, that the, the promotion I'm giving now. Has ever been overdue. I should have been given that. Assuming in February '68, I accepted the 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 the, the PIP or the commission EC. They call it EC, Emergency Commission. Had I been, I did not give that uh, commission to my one of my boys. Mm. I will have been a major general for quite a long time ago. And your boy that you gave it to? I was a colonel before I even became a... I was a captain when he became a colonel. Colonel GS in, in Kaduna. You, Asuko Basi, that's the name. Wow. So life is not fair and sometimes. I, no, 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 there's nothing. That boy was very good to me. Mm. He, in, fact, he, in fact, he was the one following me up and down. And uh, we emanated from the same Jordan barracks. Mm. But I, by virtue of my number, I became a senior and rather a senior. Him. But he was so peaceful, he was so nice. I, in fact, I didn't know even the time I said, okay, put his name down instead of me. Yes. You know, he was so nice to me. <laughs> but people started blaming me. How will you have uh, rejected the uh, commission? How will, is that not some call me general today? Mm. Uh, so, and if you know me, what I did in Ibadan here, I was in Ibadan for six years at the garrison. I was the one conversing money from uh, Dubai to, to uh, Akpata behind the command, burning the money and uh, mm. doing it there gone. When they change the money, when the currency yes. was changed, I would go to the trailer, load, load of load of trailer. We would take that uh, trailer to uh, Apata behind command. No, I will search my pocket. Come and see my pocket, my officers and so on. They will search, and I will now search them one by mm -hmm. one. If I did not take cover, let me see who will have taken penny. I think I know because I don't have that luck. Wow. Uh, but people blame, say, ah, no, how will I have done that? That will have hidden some of them. No, I don't. I don't want that. And that's exactly what gave me that honor. Yes, FS, FSS. FSS, MSS. MSS. Yes. For your integrity. And Buhari compensated you, com compensated you yes, with a promotion. Promotion, yes. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you. Too. And you retired from the army? Year 2000. In the year 2000. 
That was about 23 years ago. That's it. The Nigerian Army. I didn't tell you about this book. You want to read about the Nigerian Army? Look at the book. The Brief Political History of the Nigerian Army. Have you mm. seen this? Hubris, A Brief Political History of the Nigerian Army. A book written by Akintunde Akinkumi. Read this book. Yes. Mm. So, Baba, which of the books do you want to pick? Mm, okay. Let, let me see. Um, okay. This, this you are holding. The one you are holding. This one. How much? How much is this? No, one? you don't have to pay. You want to take this? Okay. I want to go and read this. Yes. So, we are <laughs> gifting you this. Okay. This is your gift. God bless For you. coming on the show. Thank Hubris, you. a brief political history. Of, of the Nigerian, Nigerian army. army, yes. You are old soldier. I'm, I'm, yes, I'm historical too. Good. And I was once a student of history. history. I know much about all this. So this is your book, sir. God bless you. I share it that and I, I really appreciate yes. it. Yes. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming, sir. Thank you. I've seen more of you. Yes. Thank you. Is that all? No, you, you, let me sign out. Okay. Yes. So... I am Edmond Obilo. I worked with Ayo Ashimolowo to bring you this edition of the program. We'll be back on Monday for a fresh edition. But join me tomorrow on Splash 105.5 FM, the Integrity Station, for the Splash FM edition of State Affairs. Thank you for always being there. State Affairs with Edmond Bilo is live.